worthy of. Come on, lift those hands. God, we praise you. God, we thank you. God, we give you glory. We honor you on this day. Glory, for this is the day that you have made. And our decision is that we will rejoice and we will be glad in it. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. And let us exalt his name together. My foot shall dwell within thy gates, O Jerusalem. Is there anybody in here glad to be in the house of the Lord? Is there anybody that's glad to be in the house of the Lord? Let's bow our heads in a word of prayer. Father, we honor you and we thank you so much for your grace and for your mercy. Thank you for your loving kindness, God. Thank you because you have allowed us one more day to get up and give you glory. Thank you, God, because you put breath in our bodies, God. It wasn't the alarm clock that woke us up this morning, God, but it was because of your mercies that we're not consumed. Your compassions, they fail not, for they are renewed every morning. Great God is your faithfulness. And we thank you, God, for keeping us even during this challenging time, God. You declared that one of the songwriters declared that time is filled with swift transitions. And God, we have built our hopes on you, God. We don't trust in chariots or horses, but on you. And God, we need your anointing in this place on today, God. Fill somebody's heart, heart God, with your word. Fill somebody's heart, God, so that they may make a conscious decision, God, to come to you, God, and to give their lives to you God energize somebody on today God give them hope God and give them encouragement and we're going to praise you and we're going to thank you and we're going to give you glory it is in that matchless and wonderful and holy name Lord Jesus we pray let every voice be lifted every hand be raised and give God the best praise you have come on come on oh magnify him come on come on give him that praise give him that praise give him that praise hallelujah and lift your hands if you love the Lord. Hallelujah. Has he been good to anybody in the building this morning? Hallelujah. to the good. 
the great I am. Jesus. He's the Prince of Peace. Jesus. 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 I love, I love the call. Jesus. 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 He's a doctor in a sick room. Jesus. He's a lawyer in the courtroom. Jesus. Tell me what's his name. Jesus. 
life. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Call him one more time. Say, Jesus. Now throw those hands up and throw your head back and shout the name Jesus. Come on in here. Look at somebody that's about six feet apart from you and tell them there's something about the name. Hey, yes. Something about the name. Something about the name. Something about the name. Listen, I dare you to holler his name. Something gonna break in your life. Something gonna break in your family life. Something gonna break on your home. I dare you to throw those hands up and throw your head back and say, G call, come on, call his name. Say, Jesus. Oh, yes. Hallelujah. Anybody got a post-COVID praise up in here? I know COVID ain't over yet, but we're going to praise him like it's over. We're still going to practice our six feet. We're still going to cover our face, but guess what? Guess what, devil? Our faces might be covered, but our praise ain't covered. I got about 15 folk in here that can make a devil, let the devil know that although my face is covered, my praise still ain't covered. I need somebody in here to lift those hands and let the devil know I still got my praise. Oh, Lord, don't get it twisted. I still, I still, oh, I still got my praise. He's been too good to me. He's been too good to me. Is there anybody in here that can testify to the fact that he's been so good? He's been so good. He's been Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Oh, yes. Glory to God. Hallelujah. God. Anybody in here glad that God kept you? It could have been another way, y'all. It could have been another way. Oh, my God. Sister Melba's been on the front line this whole time. She got a praise. She got a front line praise. Listen. Listen. Sister Melba got a front line praise. Guess what? Anybody got a front line praise? Anybody want to get on the front line with Sister Melba? Go ahead and give God the praise that he's worthy of. Come on in here.
hear some stirring. I ain't messing with y'all this I said, open your mouth and say, yes, Lord. Open your mouth and say, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, I'm cool. Yes, I'm cool. Yes, I'm praising. Yes, I'm praising. In the good times, in the bad times, in the work times, in the indifferent times. I will. I will. I will. I will. I will. Bless the Lord. I will give him glory. Yes, Lord. good in here. Glory to God. Thank you, praise team. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Glory to God. For the Lord is good. He's great. Hey, glory to God. And greatly to be praised in the city of our God and in the mountains of his holiness. Oh, he's such a wonderful savior. The songwriter said, I was lost in sin, but Jesus took me in. He's a wonderful savior to me, Deacon. He's a wonderful savior. Well, today, this is the day that the Lord has made. And we made a decision about the day that the Lord has made. Our decision is we will rejoice. And we will be glad in it. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Wow. What an opportune time that we live in right now. How might one say that this is an opportune time when everything has been altered? Well, sometimes God has to allow things to happen so that we can get back to the real meat of the matter. He told us to go. And when I tell you that COVID-19 has sent us or God used, allowed COVID-19 to come to be the agency that would send us because we can't adjourn like we, or come together, convene rather like we usually do in our worship buildings. But the word of God is still going out. Somebody just lift those hands and just worship God right there where you are. Hallelujah. Just worship him. Yes, just worship him. Jesus, Jesus. Precious Jesus, oh, for grace to trust Him more. Say Jesus, Jesus, say Jesus, Jesus. Come on, lift that offering if you know it. How I, how I prove Him. Him more. Oh, say Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus. Oh, for grace. Oh, for grace. Sing like you mean to say, oh, for grace. If it wasn't for grace, where would we be? Oh, for grace. Sing, oh, for grace, oh, for grace. 
It was grace that kept me as it was, oh, for grace. It was grace that saved me, oh, for grace. Say, oh, for grace, oh, for grace to trust him, oh. Psalms chapter number one. Well, today is Father's Day. We celebrate all fathers on this wonderful day. And so I'm glad the Lord allowed us as fathers to have a day because every other day is his. And even this day is his. So every day is the Father's Day. But today is Father's Day. He allows us to celebrate fatherhood. And we celebrate fatherhood for all of you that are in here, that are fathers and all of you that are looking on. We thank God for your contribution to being a godly father. We honor God for you. Celebrate hard, y'all. I don't know what you're going to do. Y'all, y'all, I mean, the store is open yet? I don't know. The, they, they, they starting to open up? Amen. <laughs> well, usually on Father's Day, my father would always say on Father's Day, you, you, can, you can go anywhere you want to, to eat. Mother's Day, you got to make reservations. But I don't know. This Father's Day right here, you might have to make a reservation or something because, you know, everybody's just trying to get out of the house. They got cabin fever. And so they're trying to get out of the house. But thank God for all of our fathers. We celebrate you all. Bless you. Bless you. Amen. So we want to talk about, we want to talk to the fathers today and talk to the brothers, talk to the men on today. In the book of Psalms, the first chapter, let's go there. Thank God for every one of you that have gathered in this house on today. Modified version of our worship experience. No, 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 of our presence, but we don't modify our worship. Amen. We cannot modify our worship. Amen. Because God deserves all of our worship regardless of situations and circumstances he deserves all of us he deserves it yes he does psalms the first chapter i'm going to talk to you today about the portrait of a blessed man a blessed man a blessed man a blessed father psalms chapter number one and verse number one i'm going to begin reading there blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly nor standeth in the way of sinners nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful Verse number two, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. Listen to where his, his, his delight is, his objective, his focus. His delight is in the law of the Lord. This is the blessed man we're talking about. And in his law doth he meditate day and night. Verse number three tells us the results of this blessed man. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth fruit in his season. This is a good one right here, y'all. Well, all of it is good, but this is really, really good. His leaf also shall not wither. And whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. I'm talking about the portrait of a blessed man. Father, we thank you for your word. It is already blessed. Begin to distribute it appropriately into our hearts, into our minds, that we may embrace it with clarity, that we may live by it. God, we thank you. For every father today, we celebrate fatherhood. We celebrate manhood. We celebrate your existence as being the chief and the model father because you showed us how to be fathers. And we thank you and we praise you for these that are assembled. Now we need your anointing because without it, we can do absolutely nothing. It is in that matchless, that wonderful and holy name, Lord Jesus, we pray. Let everyone say amen. Portrait of a blessed man. There has been in this um, in this recent society, in this world, not just in recent times, but a lot of emphasis has been placed on uh, the de- decay of the male. Especially if I can drill down even further and get a little bit more um, specialized or a little bit more concentrated, the decay of the black male. And so a lot of emphasis has been uh, put on that. And how has that emphasis been put on the decay of the, of the man and the black man? Well, uh, one of the ways that society chooses to put emphasis on things is that they do it through media. 
So what you see on TV, what you see in the news, and believe me, they will show you what they want you to see. They are framing, they are framing and they are intentional about what they're showing us. Because there are people that don't even know a lot about uh, black people and black society. And this is not a black message, y'all, don't, don't, don't get nervous. Um, they, they don't know a lot about black people because they're from other co continents, from other places, but they already have this preconceived notion about who we are, our character, and what we do because of mainstream media. And so they paint this picture and they do it intentionally. And what their intentions are, um, you know, I, I don't know what all the details of their intentions are, but they're very strategic at painting that. What you see on mainstream TV is a whole bunch of uh, little boys and men killing one another. Amen. Whenever you see a, a good movie come out and they put a lot of emphasis on the good, bad movies. Amen. Denzel Washington, an amazing actor. In anything that he does, he's an amazing actor. But he gets, what is it, the Grammy or the Oscar? I don't know which one it is. He gets the, let's say Grammy. He gets the Grammy for training day. Talk to me about that. Now, and I'm glad he got the award, and, and it was, it's a prestigious award in the whole nine yards, but why couldn't he get the Grammy for something that was positive? All of these movies that he played in that was positive, they wait until he uh, plays in and stars in one of the most vulgar movies. When I saw him, when I saw that movie, I'm like, man, this is such a departure for him, but he's playing that thing well. And they give him the award for one of the most negative movies that he has ever made. Why? Because I'm framing, I'm framing black. I need to keep men in their context. I, I need to keep the image of men the way that we need them to see men, especially black African-American men. Need them to continue to see them in that way because how you perceive a person is how you will receive a person. If I perceive them to be negative, then that's the way that I'm going to expect and I'm going to receive them to be negative. And so it's all about framing, showing us what they want us to see because imagery, imagery is very important. Imagery is very important. And one thing about a portrait, if you ever take a picture of a portrait, a portrait always represents the past, whether it was the past second or the past minute. You could have changed within that past within three minutes, but that picture still represents the previous three minute portion of time. A portrait always represents the past. If you see a future portrait, then I'm going to get nervous with you. Because you might be seeing things right now, you might not, you might see visions and I'm not saying, suggesting that you don't see visions, etc. But pictures, when you put a portrait up on the screen or up on the wall, it always represents the past. And that's why on Facebook, you can't be, you can't, you know, you can't put too much merit in the way folk look on Facebook. Y'all not talking back to me, y'all. <laughs> be, be, because you might not put a now picture out there. You put one about 10 years back. Why? Because you didn't have as much gray in your beard. Because I'm getting some gray in the beard, and so now I got to get a picture that didn't have so much gray, Brother Warren. I got to, you know, because I want to make sure that, you know, imagery, imagery means everything. How people see you, how people perceive you. And so uh, we, we, when we get a picture, we got to be careful of how we look at that thing because it paints a picture in our mind. And if we're not careful, we will embrace the imagery of the past when the past, Natasha, has now changed. And that's where people will, m will mess up with you because you have moved on from what you used to be. But because the imagery in their mind, they will continue to contain you in how you was and how you were and never be able to embrace the beauty of the transforming glory that you are now. 
That's why some people, when they get saved, their, their family members will say, well, I'm going to just wait a little while and see how things work out for you. Let me know how that works out for you. Because they remember you when. And they cannot embrace, they cannot perceive, they cannot wrap their minds around the fact that this one experience has caused you to not to want to smoke anymore. Come on, man, we used to get, here's, here's a six pack or here's a, uh, I don't know how many cigarettes are in a pack. That's, amen. Here's a six pack of, of brew. Amen. Come on, let's hit this six pack. Well, they can't understand how is it that one, you went to this one church. And now all of a sudden, by you going to this one church, now you don't want to hang out with us anymore. Now, it's not that I'm trying to be wonderful. It's just that I'm not who I used to be. And people will wait you out to try to push you back and to contain you into who you used to be. And with, sometimes it will prohibit you from developing into who you should be. Imagery is very important. Imagery is very important. So God is very particular about painting the picture of imagery. Even when he, when he constructed the, the, the tabernacle proper, he was very particular about all of the details of it. Why? Because I need you to see it. I need the imagery to be in your mind. That's why he said to write the vision imagery, imagery. You got to be able to see it. When you see it better, then you believe it more. When you believe it more, you walk in it more. You walk in it more confidently. Why? Because I can see it. Now, when it comes to faith, we don't walk by sight. We walk by faith, but not by sight. Now, these are the things of Christ. When we walk with God Imagery in him. We've got to have our eyes on him. Imagery is still important because it is important for us in how we see God because how we see something is how we're going to respond to it. Man. That's pretty good there, huh? How we see something is how we're going to respond to it. You know, uh, uh, let, let me use this instance and then we're going to move on to our first point here and, and talking about uh, uh, the portrait of a blessed, a blessed man. You know, um, I used to try this when I was when I was in Maryland. I would go into a store intentionally, intentionally with me. I would go into a store and I would go in there and I would wear my yo boy, uh, you know, outfit. I put on my Adidas and I put my hat on, you know, and I walk up in the store and when people would see me, when people would see me, Sister Ashley, they'd be like, yo, what's up, man? Yo. I'd always get, yo, what's up, man? Why? Because the way they saw me, they already put me in a classification that they can respond to me and they can speak to me in a certain way. Why? Because I'm dressed a certain way. Don't tell me that dress does not dictate the way people respond to you and see you. Don't you tell me that because I know I, know I did a little. <laughs> but then I would go into the same store. Chuck, I would go in the same store, but I would put on my nice business suit, have my nice tie on. Walk in the same store, and it may not be the same person, but the response would be, good evening, sir. Why? Imagery. I'm the same person, but I had on different clothes, and it provided for them a different image. And they responded to the image that they saw. Imagery is very important. And that's why God, he gives us the, the, the depiction and the imagery of a good man because and of a blessed man because we got too much imagery of bad people, bad behavior. I like to say this and I was talking to someone the other day and, and I said, I believe, I believe that what's innate in people is that they are good first. I believe that. I, I really do. I embrace the fact that people are good first. Yes, we make bad decisions. Yes, sometimes we have bad decisions. But I don't, I don't believe people get out of their bed and say, you know what? 
I'm going to be mean today. I'm going to be malicious. I'm going, you know, I'm going to be nasty. I'm going to go out here and I'm just going to slap somebody. Or I'm going to flip somebody off while I'm going down, down the street. I don't believe people get up with that in their mind to do. I believe by nature people are good. I believe that they want to do good. Things happen to cause them to respond and maybe their response hasn't been tempered with the Holy Ghost and tempered with relationship with Christ or tempered with a good environment. And so they respond negatively. I don't believe that people are just bad. Why don't you believe that people are, are just because when God made us, he said that it was good. Jay, I don't have anything else. I believe the man is good because God said he was good, right? So I have to go by the word. Even when we look at the behavior of people, we still have to go by the word. You're still good. I know you're doing bad things, but what you're doing is not you. What you're doing is a response to you being de depressed or you being despondent or you being disappointed. No, that is not who you are. That is what you are doing. Imagery, imagery. And society has painted this picture. But I thank God for the word because society can paint all they want to. Because we always have a base image to go back to. So here's what the word says. He said, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the un ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight, here's what I want to focus on today. This second verse right here. A blessed man, number one, delights in the direction of God's word. A blessed man, a blessed man, delights in the direction of God's word. Does not mean that he's always favorable to it because some things God tell you to do. And if I can get some honest men in here and that's looking at us online that can say, listen, I don't always like what God tells me to do, but I delight in his direction. My God. I have to be, if I'm going to be a blessed man, if I'm going to be the portrait and the imagery that God has chosen us to be, I have to delight in his way. God, I don't know what in the world that you are doing, but I trust you in it. I delight in the fact that even though I don't feel like this is the right way to go, I delight in the fact that if I go this way, I'm walking by faith and not by sight. And you're going to bring me favorable results. I'm talking about a blessed man. Talking about a blessed man. When, when, he, when he walks, the Bible said, the, the Bible said that the steps of a good man, my God, a good man. You, you got a good man in your context. You got a good man in your home. You got a good man in your service. You have a good man. I need some of the women up in here to holler at you is in here and just say, I got a good man. Hey, y'all ain't holler loud enough for me. I need to. Whether your man be your daddy, whether your man be your cousin, whether your man be your husband, whether your man be your son or your brother, I got a good man. He get on my nerves, but he is a, got a good man. Got a good man. <laughs> and the Bible says that the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. And when we delight in his ways, guess what God does? He delights in our ways. Amen. Steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. And so a good man delights in the direction of God's word. Second thing that a, a, a good man does, a blessed man does, he gives careful and thoughtful and provoking attention. I wanted to say all of those words. He gives thoughtful, provoking, and careful attention to the word of God. In verse number two, I'm talking about a blessed man. A blessed man delights in the direction of God. And a blessed man also gives careful, thoughtful, and provoking attention to the word of God. Look at verse number two. 
but his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law or in his word, doth he meditate, the Bible says in verse number two, day and night. That word meditate does not mean for you or us to close our eyes and to rock from side to side. No, that may not be meditation. It may be because some of us meditate in different ways. I'm not throwing no shade. How you meditate, you meditate. But this word meditate right here literally means and it is also the word that meditate that comes from the book of joshua that this word of the law shall not depart out of your mouth but you shall meditate on it day and night then you shall make your way prosperous and be in good health that's what god told joshua and so he comes here in the book of Psalm and he said, but his delight is in the law of the Lord and in his law, in his law, in his word, does he meditate? The word meditate means to mutter or to say over and over and over and over again. That's what the word meditate means. It means to mutter. Whether you mutter it out loud or whether you mutter it under your breath, it does not matter. When we mutter the word, when we speak the word, the word becomes life. The words that I speak, they are spirit and they are life. Can I push it a little bit further? Death and life lie in the power of the tongue. I know you got the word in your heart and I know you got the word in your mouth, but every now and then the word has got to come out of your mouth. Every now and then, when you're going through tumultuous situations, you got to say, I still believe that God is able. He said that I am the head and not the tail. You got to say it until you believe it. You might be as broke as anything, but you got to say, I am the head and not the tail. I shall be the lender and not the borrower. I shall be blessed when in the city. I shall be blessed in the field. I need some folk to just say, I'm blessed when I come. I'm blessed when I go. I'm blessed when I go to the grocery store. I'm blessed when I drive in my car. I'm blessed when I'm in my living room. I'm blessed when I'm in my family room. I am blessed and you gotta say it till you believe it when the enemies comes against you like a flood you gotta be able to say the word thy word O Lord have I hidden in my heart that I might not sin against thee and what is in your heart the Bible said from the abundance of the heart the mouth speaketh oh glory to God <laughs> so he gives careful thought and provoking attention to the word of God and the next thing that a blessed man does what characteristic of a blessed man a blessed man is one that is established and not easily moved verse number three he says it like this yeah. he said and he shall be like a tree why is he like a tree planted by the rivers of water? Because of verse number two. Because deacon, the word establishes us. The word gives us depth. The word anchors us. So we can't just get number three without number two. Number two said, the reason why I'm so established and so firm and so confirmed is because I have a relationship with the word. Yeah, y'all see that, don't you? How is it that I have a relationship with the word? Because I meditate on the word, not just when I'm in church service. Because you know what? Your greatest opposition is not going to come when you're gathered among your greatest opposition is going to come when you leave here and you have to be able to have the word in you when you leave here to fight the enemy. So he has says his delight is in the law of the Lord. He shall be like a tree. A blessed man is one that is established and cannot easily be removed. Here's what a blessed man is. Here's, here's what a blessed man is. A blessed man is not spontaneous in his decision. Let me say that one more time, Taylor. Let me say that for me. Um, did I say that out loud? A good man is not spontaneous in his decisions, but makes decisions, get this y'all, from his base. 
does not make willy-nilly decisions, does not make spontaneous decisions. I'm talking about a blessed man. I'm talking about a blessed man. A blessed man does not make decisions that are just willy-nilly. He makes decisions that are from his base, not spontaneous. It's rare that you'll find a man that goes window shopping and, and just spontaneously buys. I don't know. I can't say that now because men have been blessed. And um, we, we go out sometimes, too. We do some spontaneous shopping, don't we? Don't we, do? we, just, we know good and well. Jazz, we know good and well that we did not need that weed either because we got three of them. We did not need that nail gun. We did not. We did not need that 65-inch TV because we already got a 60-inch. Then why, why, why? But, but we do it. We, we do it. I ain't throwing no shade because, you know, <laughs> I, can't, I can't throw no stones. <laughs> I'm not the one. I'm going to tell you that right now. I'm not the one to throw no stones. But a blessed man... It's one that cannot easily be moved. He makes decision from his base. And what is his base? Well, back to verse number two. Because verse number two is the anchor. It is the base. It is the premise by which I make all of my decisions. It is the premise by which I move, I act, and I exist. Why? Because it's the word of God. The word anchors us. The word centers us. The word allows all of the uh, now things that are going on to just go right past us because I don't have to jump on the train with every little thing that's coming up that's new. Amen. I don't need the new PlayStation because I just got the new one three months ago. When you get the latest and greatest technology device, y'all, I'm, I'm, I'm done, y'all. When you get the latest and greatest technology device, iPhone users, the next one is already in process. And they, it seems like to me that Apple starts sending to you these little things that make your phone act up a little bit. Now, maybe it's just conspiracy theory to me. But, but listen, the iPhone 11 is out now, and I'm sure the iPhone 12 is coming out right about Christmas. You heard it here first. You didn't hear it on TV first. Right about Christmas, here come iPhone 12, because iPhone 11 has, I think, three cameras. I can't relate, because I have iPhone 7, Tasha, so I don't know. I'm, I'm way behind. My phone be messing up, and I said, well, that's all right. I don't care. I'm just, I'm, I ain't going to get no 11 right now. Because that 11 is $1,200, and I, mine paid for it, so I'm good. As long as I can make phone calls and see who texts me, and that, I'm good. But just as sure as you're in here today, Father's Day, on this day, Men's Day, my God, the iPhone 12 has already been worked out. And if you're a gadget man, you, you got, I, well, why you have to have the iPhone 12? Because it's out. I mean, whatever the, the, the what, what, what other excuse do I need? The iPhone 12 is out. What do you, what do you not understand about O-U-T? It's out. Well, why do you need it? Because it's out. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> but a good man, a blessed man, a blessed man. Makes decisions from his base. Where does he get his base from? He gets his base from the word of God. His base from the word of God will instruct us even in our finances. I don't have $1,200 for the iPhone 11. So I'm not going to put it on my credit card. Y'all didn't hear that. If you don't have $1,200, make decisions from your base. Okay, let me bring it. Let me put it where you can get it. Your base is, if I can just come to the carnal and the natural, your base is your bank account. 
Your bank account will tell you everything you need to know about your base. Y'all ain't, ta ain't talking in here. Well, see, what I'm going to do, what I'm, I'm just going to go ahead and get it. And your base is screaming, no, don't do it. Your base is hollering at you. Your base is telling you, listen, if you do this, there's going to be a bounce check. And a bounce check has a bounce check. Too many of y'all done bounce checks. We got to fix that. And then once you get the fee, you didn't have the money in the first place. Now the fee comes and puts you further in the hole and it just snowballs. And then, oh, by the way, I forgot I wrote a check to the church. Oh, Lord, now that's going to bounce. I'm talking about some, I'm talking about a blessed man. I ain't talking about a blessed man makes decisions from his base. The base, first of all, is the word of God. So he makes decisions from his base. Let me move on here. I got to finish this. Now, let, let me jump to the last point here. A blessed man produces the harvest of righteousness. Here's what he said in verse number three. He said, his leaf, he shall bring forth fruit. Let me just read the whole thing for context. He said, he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit. That's very important. That bringeth forth whose fruit? His fruit. You have the responsibility of bringing forth your fruit. Well, Pastor Taylor, he just ain't acting right. Bring forth your fruit. Well, Pastor Taylor, he, I keep saying he because this is Father's Day. He get on my nerves. Bring forth your fruit because the purpose of fruit is to feed and to nurture. So guess what fruit has in it? Fruit has in it natural nutrients. Y'all know where I'm going with this. You, you know where I am. Fruit has in it natural nutrients. It has vitamin C. It has vitamin B. It has all the other vitamins in there. I'm not a health nut. By no stretch of imagination, you can tell, you know, I, you know unfortunately, I'm, I'm, I'm the hamburger and fries man. But fruit, fruit is good for you. Fruit, fruit is good for your body. Amen. My, my daughter Whitney, she's here today. Thank God for her. But she, 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 you know, she's a health person now. She, she does healthy things. She's, you know, she does cleansers and, and all kinds. I don't know what she do, but she a whole, whole bunch of stuff that she does. She drink the right drinks and the whole nine yards. And then she'll send us pictures and she'll say, look at me now. <laughs> I'm going to say this and I'm going to be done. Because proper diet pr produces proper results. Wow. Proper diet produces proper results. That's why she can, the image that we had of her before, we just talked about imagery, the image that we had before of her, she will give us the before image, but then she'll say, well, don't get too locked into that because now I need you to see me now. How you like me now? Because good diet produces good results. He says, a blessed man produces or has a good diet because he brings forth his fruit in his season. Another point to that, a point B to that is that he's patient in the process of production. He's patient in the process of production. You're not going to get everything today. Amen. I need to lose some weight, but if I go out to American family, they just open back up. Some of the other fitness players, if I go there today, I'm not going to lose the weight today, y'all. It took me a while to get this here. I know what I was, listen, took me a little minute to get this man. So it's going to take me a while. You got to be patient in the process of production. He said, bring it forth the fruit in his season. And here's, and here's, a, here's a good part right here, y'all. He said, he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. 
uh, that bringeth forth his fruit, his own fruit in his season. There is a season. There is a time for you to produce. There is a time and a blessed man is patient to wait for his time. You may not know when your time is, but I'm patient to wait on it because I know who I'm waiting on. There's some people you, you get impatient about waiting on because you don't know when they're going to show up. Because last time they told you they were going to show up at 1215, they showed up at 615 and they thought you thought and they had all kinds of good excuses. Well, I had to go here and I had a flat tire and I, you know, they're always inconsistent, but because you know who you are waiting on, it gives you the patience in the process of production. Patience in the process. And here's what he says here. And I'm finished. He said, he bringeth forth his fruit in his season and his leaf shall also, his leaf also shall not wither. And whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. Why? Where do I get the prosperity of my doing? I do. I get the prosperity or the power of prosperity of my doing from verse number two. Everything evolves from the base. A blessed man is blessed because of verse number two. Verse number three are the results of the anchoring and the foundation. But we cannot expect verse number three and we cannot expect the other things to happen if we do not have a base. But we have people and brothers and men and fathers in here this afternoon that can attest to the fact that I am blessed because I got the word and I abide by the word. That's it. That's it. Picture of a blessed man. Portrait of a blessed man. We got to re we got to rewrite the script, y'all. We got to repicture things. We got to reframe things. Just like Whitney was sending us the updated version. My God, we we gonna have to send out to the world, Sharita, the updated version. We got some. We have some blessed men that are in this congregation. We have some blessed men that are looking on. My God, by Facebook and YouTube or whatever channel and media that you're watching us right now. We have some blessed men. Why? Because the word said number one that God created you good, and then you're walking in the word. Let's all stand. Hallelujah. Portrait of a blessed man. Blessed man. Happy Father's Day, blessed men. Yes. That walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law, Shall he meditate, mutter, speak the word day and night? And here's what happens to a blessed man. We're reshaping, reforming, reintroducing to society what a blessed man looks like. He bringeth forth nurturing fruit. A blessed man is nurturing. A blessed man is not damaging. A blessed man is is nurturing he brings forth fruit a blessed man is patient in his season a blessed man is not just for right now a blessed man is perpetual because the bible said and his leaf shall not wither and whatsoever you do will prosper god thank you thank you for this father's day Thank you for these blessed men that are here in this congregation and that are watching us by what our media platforms they are looking at us today. Thank you, God, because they're anchored in your word. They're not anchored in what society, the picture the society has painted for us, but they're anchored in your word. So continue, God, to nurture us. Continue, God, to allow us to be guided by your word not by our instincts but by your word help us to be the fathers that we are supposed to be in you help us to be the husbands to our wives that we should be in you help us God 
to be the cousins, to be the friends, to be the men in our society, in our communities that you've called us to be. We thank you, God, because you have given us what we need. You've given us everything we need to be able to succeed. And we honor you and praise you in Jesus' name. Maybe there's some man that's watching that you've been grappling back and forth with. You know God's been tugging on your heart. You know the Lord has been calling you. And so we want to introduce you to the father of all fathers. He is our father and he can be your father as well so you may be looking at us online or you may be even hearing us from the periphery maybe not directly viewing us but just hearing us from the other room but however the word is the word and the Lord is calling you somebody has walked away from God he's calling you back home come back to the nurture of the Holy Ghost. Glory, glory, glory. You've been grabbed. You know God's been tugging on you. And the Lord said, come on back. Come on back. Come on back. Welcome him into your heart. Welcome him back into your life. You know he's still good. God is immutable. He does not change. He's still good. And so we introduce, reintroduce, reacquaint you to the Father that is above all fathers. I'm praying, Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you for these fathers. Somebody out there now, God, you've been tugging on their heart. And we ask God that you would move by your power and your strength right, right now. Let them know that it's okay to come back to you. Because you will in no wise cast them out. So God, I thank you, God, right now for moving on that heart right now, that mind, that soul, and that spirit. Move by your power, God. Fill, with them, fill them with the Holy Ghost all over again. Refresh them, God. Bring them back into right relationship and right standings with you. God, somebody has never experienced your power. Walk into that room right now, God. Perform a miracle right there. I rebuke the hand of the enemy off of their mind, off of their emotions. I rebuke the hand of the enemy off of their decision, their bad and unproductive and ungodly decision. I rebuke the hand of the enemy right now. Satan, take your hands off. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Those of you that are here, just give the Lord the worship. Give the Lord the praise. Come on, give him praise. Hallelujah. Jesus, you are welcome, say. Come in the house. There's healing in the house. There's healing, say. There's healing. Healing in the house, yes. Jesus, you are welcome. Come on in the house. Come in the house, yes. Oh, come in the house. Jesus, you are welcome, say. Jesus, you are welcome. Jesus, you are welcome. Hey, glory to God. Yes, you are. Jesus, you are welcome. Yes, you are. Oh, come in the house. Give the Lord a welcoming worship right now. Welcoming praise. Come on. Lift those hands. Those of you that are viewing us online, we want you to plant a seed into the fertile soil of this kingdom methods by which you can give you can give by cash app you can give by givelify you can mail your payment in or mail mail your gift in your seed in not payment but your seed mail your seed in or you can go out online and you can give there as well 
but we want you to plant a seed into the fertile soil of this kingdom and those of you that are in this congregation we want you to plant a seed on today when last Sunday I believe it was we asked 